Hello, friends. We are indeed honored to have with us today Reina Janamnua Sok, who is Program Manager for Transgender Health at the Institute of HIV Research and Innovation in Bangkok, Thailand. She has established the Tangerine Community Health Clinic, the first transgender led health clinic in the region. And Reina is also the co founder of the Thai Transgender Alliance the first transgender-owned human rights organization in Thailand. Welcome, Reina. And Reina, Thailand has one of the best public health systems in Southeast Asia and South, East, South Asia as much as I know of. How does it integrate health services for different genders, including transgender populations? Yes, so thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to to thank you, uh, Soba, for, for giving me this opportunity to, to speak uh, with you today. So to respond to your first question, I think at the moment, Thailand, like many um, countries in Asia, I can say that gender affirming care for transgender populations have not been supported uh, or subsidized under the universal health coverage yet. But in the past five years, we have been actively working closely with the Ministry of Public Health and the National Health Security Office to, to um, uh, advocate for including gender affirming care for transgender populations into the universal health coverage. So it's still ongoing but um, maybe in the next few years, we can have that uh, uh, universal health coverage for trans people. Thank you. Uh, Reina, you co-founded Thai Transgender Alliance in 2010. What inspired you to form this alliance? And why is it important to integrate other human rights with the right to health security for all, including gender diverse people? Yes, um, I would say uh, with the, the efforts uh, that uh, I actually work with other co-founders to establish uh, this first um, transgender-led alliance foundation for human rights 12 years ago. At that time, I would say that we did not even have our transgender-owned or transgender-led human rights-based organization in Thailand. So that's why we receive a small grant to organize like a community consultation among the transgender representatives. And based on that consultation, we, we agree upon that there should be an establishment of the first transgender-led or transgender-owned human rights-based organization in Thailand. So at that time, we were not visible as a community-based organization. So that's why we established the Thai Transgender Alliance since then. And why do you think it's important to integrate human rights with the right to health security? Yes, because human rights is the principle of everything. As a human being or as an individual, regardless of your gender, your race, your ethnicity, or your age, or your religions, I think human rights based should, should be integrated as part of your life. And as a human being or as a citizen in Thailand, I think the everyone should respect uh, transgender populations and rights to health is actually one of the human right aspect that we are really giving the importance or the, the, the basics um, the right to healthcare services, I think it was really important at that time, or even now today. Exactly. Uh, you have also established the Tangerine Community Health Clinic. I think in 2015, you established that. So uh, we would like to know something more about it. Any special uh, uh, thing behind the name? Why the name Tangerine? And, uh, and how is it helping the transgender community? Yes, yeah, so I think we... Uh, back to seven years ago, we also faced the, the similar challenges that in HIV services and programming, we were not able to identify any transgender people to come 
for HIV testing. Uh, it may be because of the stigma and discriminations in healthcare setting, or there was no uh, transgender specific services, or the healthcare providers were not gender sensitive enough for transgender populations. So we, uh, as an organization at IHRI, we see that this is this was an alarming issue that we need to address. So that's why we organized the national. Uh, transgender community consultation in 2015 and we invited transgender representatives across the country that represented diverse background of transgender populations. They represented young transgender people, transgender sex workers, transgender men, transgender women, transgender celebrities, as well as transgender who are living with HIV. So based on that national dialogue, we mutually agree that there should be an establishment of the first transgender specific healthcare clinics in Thailand. And um, about the tangerine, why tangerine? Tangerine actually was nominated by Dr. Fritz van Greisven, who uh, was one of the, the protocol uh, who one, was one of uh, the, the protocol developer for the tangerine service. And this name was actually uh, nominated. And at that time, lots of transgender representatives also nominated their own preferred names. But at the end of the, the consultation, we reached to the consensus that the tangerine is the most appropriate term and it's not too feminine, it's not too masculine, and it represents a fruit that is colorful, it's healthy, and the color is also attractive to our transgender population. So that's the, the notion behind the name tangerine. And one of the, the strengths that tangerine has is the clinic is actually led by a team of trained transgender staff. Right now they can, uh, they become transgender counselors, they can become transgender clinic supervisors, and they're working along well with other gender sensitive healthcare practitioners, including physicians and nurses. Uh, Zena, you have been involved with transgender health since a very long time. Uh, can you please share some of the major success stories as well as existing challenges, especially in the context of HIV care services? Uh, from what I have seen in Thailand, from my little experience, I still find that uh, there is a lot more uh, streamlining of the transgender people in uh, the uh, mains, in the common society as compared to many other countries of the region. I think it, this is what I have found. But in the context of HIV care services, and as I said, success stories as well as challenges, if you can share. Yes, sure. Um, I think one of the, the challenges that we experienced in the past seven years uh, after we have implemented the services at the Tendering Clinic was that uh, we have experienced low PrEP uptake among the transgender populations, especially among the transgender women. And we try to put a lot of efforts to address to these challenges. We learned that PrEP has been associated with stigma around HIV. PrEP has been associated with risk behavior. PrEP has been associated with having multiple sexual partners or something like that. PrEP has used to become like stigmatizing an HIV prevention uh, strategies in Thailand. So that's why lots of transgender people, they also perceive that if they are using PrEP, they will become stigmatized by their society 
by their family members, partners, or even healthcare providers. So that's why this, uh, this challenge is something that we really aware of and we wanted to address to, the, to these challenges. So two years ago, we launched the first transgender specific PrEP campaign called Sec, um, PrEP in the City. So we wanted to increase the visibility of the transgender women in public healthcare system. And the messages that we use around PrEP was very positive. We do not use any stigmatizing messages. Instead, we using empowering messages for transgender people to consider whether or not PrEP is right for them. So I think, and after the launch of PrEP in the city campaign, we have seen like improve or better PrEP uptake among these uh, populations. And the success story that I would like to share with you is that when we established the Tangerine Clinic, we received lots of interest uh, even from both um, organizations in the country, as well as from international organizations in the region. So right now, I can say that the Tangerine Clinic has been used as a model to be replicated by other countries. So, and recently, we work to provide technical assistance to many organizations in the region to establish a transgender-specific or transgender-focused clinic like the Tangerine Clinic in many countries, including Myanmar, Laos, the Philippines, Vietnam, or even in Sri Lanka. So I can say that it's very, I'm very proud of having seen many, many transgender-specific health clinics in our regions. And uh, uh, what about uh, the access to diagnosis, treatment, or viral load suppression, and care services around HIV in uh, transgender population and others, other key populations? Uh, because uh, uh, we have seen the rates of HIV infection are much higher in key populations in many countries. So what is the situation in Thailand? Has there been an improvement over the past few years regarding I care? Yes. yes, thank you for your question. I can say that in terms of HIV testing, we Thailand is doing very good in terms of reaching to, to those who do not know their HIV status. And in terms of link to um, antiretroviral treatment, I think it, it has been proven that if our clients or key populations comes to use the services at the community-led organization or community-based organizations. I think the, the key population lay providers, they were able to link our, their clients into treatment and care services, and it's actually leading to viral load suppressions. However, in the past um, two or three years, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, we found that it was very challenging to reach to those who are engaging in sexual risk behaviors. You know, we, um, we have um, the government shutdown policies, the clients cannot come to use the services as routine services like what they did before. So we have to change our service provision and service delivery methods by introducing telehealth services in order to make sure that they can continue that treatment, they can continue that prep at their homes. So I think it's a kind of adaptive and innovative um, HIV prevention care and treatment strategies. Do you think uh, there are enough community-led uh, responses for HIV care and control uh, in Thailand and in other uh, uh, parts of the Southeast Asian and South Asian countries, or is there need for more community-led uh, responses? Yes, I don't think right now in our region we need more community-led organizations or even key populations lay, lay providers need to be trained, need to be empowered to be able to provide HIV services for their own communities. It doesn't mean that 
they're stealing the job from healthcare providers, but they can do task shifting or task sharing with the healthcare professionals that, um, or they can work along together with, with the healthcare provider to provide the services. Because I think one of the strengths that the key populations have is the live experience. They understand that community. They know how to communicate. They know what they really wanted. You know, so they know where they're living, in which communities, how to access or to reach to these communities. So that's why I think we need like more community-led response in HIV in our region, especially also in Thailand. And I'm sure you are going to carry that message uh, to the AIDS uh, conference yes. in Montreal, where, where you are speaking, you are giving many lectures, you are speaking in many uh, sessions there. And uh, that brings me to the theme of AIDS 2022, uh, which is the 24th International AIDS Conference to take place in Montreal very soon. Uh, its theme is re-engage and follow the science. So we need to re-engage with whom and in what ways and what is the meaning of following the science just for others to understand. Undoubtedly, we need to fully re-engage the communities, the key populations, because in the past two or three years during the pandemic, they are the, the populations who are mostly left behind in the HIV response. So I think it's a high time to re-engage the communities. The key populations need to be at the forefront of the HIV response. And following the size, all the innovative approach and methods or, or um, service provision need to be evidence-based and evidence-informed in order to push for the policy and advocacy in their own countries. So that I, I would say that working actively with the communities promote meaningful engagement with the community or key populations, I think is key in the HIV response. And this is the message that I wanted to communicate throughout. Thank you, it's very well said and, and so very pertinent, uh, Reina. Anything else you would like to add or share? You've given your message, uh, yes, yes. Yes, I think uh, I will emphasize these key messages when I will give a talk at the plenary at 8, 2022 in Montreal. Okay, uh, thank you, Reina, for sparing your time for this truly informative and inspirational conversation. Friends, we were listening to Reina Janamnaya Sok, Program Manager at the Institute of HIV Research and Innovation in Bangkok and co-founder of the Thai Transgender Alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.